All-in-one liquid cooling units such as this Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 have become very common in the desktop DIY space. They're pretty effective at cooling your CPU and they look more elegant than a bulky tower cooler. Typically these units are shipped with fans already installed or that the user can install themselves. However, they're usually shipped with enough fans to populate one side. So what I wanted to see was how much we can improve cooling performance if we go from a push configuration to a push-pull configuration with double the amount of fans. Will it even make a difference? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. A cooling configuration that I've been wanting to test for a while now was to see if doubling the amount of fans on my 360mm radiator will improve the AIO's cooling performance. On my test bench for over a year at this point, I've been using an Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 AIO. You can find the full review of this unit on my channel if you're interested. I was using this AIO to cool my Ryzen 7 5800X and it was doing a really good job. However, up until recently I decided to upgrade my test bench to Intel's Core i7-13700K so that when I do GPU testing, I'm not holding back any performance. While the 13700K is a blazing fast processor, boy oh boy does it run hot. When running an all-core workload like Cinebench R23, the processor instantly jumps to around 90 degrees Celsius to 95 degrees Celsius and I will even see the temperature warning sensors engage, informing me that the CPU was thermal throttling at one point. Now granted, I have my 13700K overclocked, temps under stock conditions weren't really an issue for me, and if I wasn't worried about overclocking, I could very well undervolt the CPU and bring down temps that way. But that doesn't really apply to my situation. In gaming though, temps really aren't problematic at all, which is ideal for me considering I'm not going to be using this test bench as a rendering farm, I'm mostly going to be using it to test gaming performance. With that said though, I'll do whatever is practical to help reduce temps. I did install a contact frame for my CPU as well, so that's probably helping a bit too. Now my Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 AIO only came with 3 fans, which were already installed on the unit for a push-pull configuration meaning that the fans are drawing in air and pushing air through the radiator fins as opposed to a pull configuration where they are sucking air through the radiator. Typically a push configuration is enough, but with my 13700K we're clearly running into some pretty high temps here. So I got a 5 pack of these Arctic P12 fans that spec wise match what this 360mm radiator came with, just minus the RGB and I'll be installing three fans on the other side for a push-pull configuration to see if that will be an effective solution to improving the cooler's performance. One of the other reasons why I was prompted on doing this is because the Liquid Freezer 2 has a thicker radiator than what other manufacturers are using, 38 millimeters. So I was wondering if perhaps having three fans on one side was maybe limiting airflow and if doubling the number of fans would result in greater heat dissipation from the radiator such that it would result in lower temps. Now before we get into the thermal results, I just wanted to quickly go over the test system specs and setup. The CPU as mentioned is a 13700K which I have overclocked its P cores to 5.5 GHz, the E cores are at 4.5 GHz, and the ring has been overclocked to 4.9 GHz. We've got 32GB of Patriot Viper Venom RGB which I have clocked to 68 mega transfer CL34. The motherboard is an MSI Z790 Carbon Wi-Fi. For the GPU we have an RTX 4090, the storage device is a 1TB WD Blue SN550, and powering all the components is an EVGA 1000G3. The Arctic Lucrate Freezer was running all of its fans at 1800 RPM, which is the maximum speed they're rated it for, and the pump speed was also running at 100%. Moving on to our results here and I decided to just save time and consolidated all the results from the three different tests into one graph because as you guys can see there's not a whole lot to discuss here. The results from the three different scenarios were attained after a 30 minute workload. The first scenario I tested was a gaming workload and I used Shadow of the Tomb Raider here for my testing. While Shadow of the Tomb Raider is a fairly old title at this point, the reason why I like testing it is because it's very well threaded and does put a pretty significant load on the CPU. 
In terms of temps, the push-pull configuration had a 3 degree advantage over the push configuration, but they both saw the CPU peak at 72 degrees Celsius. In Cinebench R23, which is a very heavy multi-core workload, both configs had the same exact average temps and peaked at 96 degrees Celsius. In Ida64, which is another heavy all-core workload, the story is the same, we actually went up by a degree on the push-pull config, but that was probably due to the higher ambient room temperature I had been testing for a while at that point. What this tells us is that the fans on this cooler were never a limiting factor. Three P12 fans set up in a push configuration provided ample airflow to dissipate heat efficiently from the cooler. If anything, you have to give credit to Arctic here for designing good fans, so adding three more fans didn't really benefit the cooler since it didn't need it. When we take a look at power consumption, and if you pay attention to the all-core workloads like Cinebench R23 and Ida64, you'll see that the CPU alone is pulling anywhere from 220 to 250 watts of power. That that is a lot of heat the cooler has to dissipate, so when you see Raptor Lake CPUs running at 90 degrees Celsius under these workloads, it should not come as a surprise. The cooler itself is just being saturated with so much heat that adding extra fans isn't the solution here. I'm hoping that for the next iteration of CPUs for the desktop, that efficiency and power consumption is an area that Intel really focuses on. Granted, I have my CPU overclocked, but even under stock conditions, if you don't have a 360mm AIO or a contact frame, you will see your temps north of 690 degrees Celsius. It's not uncommon. Honestly, it's starting to get to the point where these manufacturers need to realize that this is going to deter people away because not everyone wants to be running or spending money on these powerful cooling solutions and they may not even have the space to use it for their case. But to answer the question I had at the beginning of the video, no, it doesn't look like there is a whole lot of benefit in running a push-pull configuration over a push configuration, at least for this AIO unit that is. Results may vary depending on which AIO unit you're using, the types of fans you're using, and also which CPU you're testing with. I really wanted to test this push-pull configuration and see the results for my own curiosity, but thought, hey, I might as well share them with you guys as well in case there was anyone out there wondering what kind of results to expect. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.